Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Pip McKay and welcome to Evolve Now, where we look at the mindset and emotional intelligence for success and happiness. And in today's program, we're going to look at how to clear negative beliefs and believe in yourself, because beliefs are really primary to how we create our reality. So what are we going to look at today? What are we going to cover? First of all, what are negative beliefs and why do we have them? The eight most common negative beliefs, so you might have thought that those beliefs are only yours, but they're not. The stories we tell ourselves and how to change them. Belief Buster, a simple six-step system for clearing beliefs. And finally, best belief practice for a magnificent mindset. So let's get started. So I want to start by looking at what is a belief? What is it exactly? So really a belief is something that we hold to be true. And what's important is that they are not actually true. They are a generalization of experience. So what does that actually mean? So the best way I've ever had it explained to me is this. So imagine that you're a little kid and somebody is throwing you a basketball and the ball is thrown to you and you drop the basketball. And at first, that's just an experience. You aren't creating a thought pattern or a belief around that. And then say the person throws you the basketball again and you drop it again. <laughs> now you're starting to think, oh, maybe I'm not very good at catching a basketball. And then say the person throws the basketball again and you drop it again. And maybe the person who was throwing it to you says something to you like, oh, you don't have very good coordination. And then you might get a belief of, oh, I'm not very good at catching a ball because I don't have good coordination. So here's this experience that you've had, which is someone throwing you a ball. And then what you've done is you've generalized that into, I don't have very good coordination. And if you believe that, now all of a sudden you might generalize it further and you might go, well, I'm not very good at sport because I don't have very good coordination. And there's a belief that is created because of that event or that experience. But let's look at the way that a different belief could be formed by exactly the same experience. So you're throwing the ball, you drop it. <laughs> yeah. And you think, oh, gee, I didn't catch the ball. Then you throw in the ball again and you drop it. And then the person who's throwing the ball to you says, you might need to practice this so that you can get good at it. So you throw in the ball again and you drop it and you think to yourself, I'm going to practice this and I'm going to get really good at that. And all of a sudden a belief is born that if you practice something, you can get good at it. And then it might be generalized even further. And that might be no matter what I can't do, if I practice it, I can get good at it. And so from then, you go to play sport, and instead of, like the other person's belief, oh, I'm not good at sport, you're thinking, well, it doesn't matter how I am at the beginning. If I practice it, I can get good at it. And then you might go and you might practice throwing a ball against a wall and catching it and catching it and catching it. And because you're practicing it, you might get really, really good at it. And all of a sudden, you're the best person in school in basketball because you've practiced that. And the reason why you've practiced it is because of this belief. But we can see that it's exactly the same experience. It's just that you've processed it in your mind differently. And this becomes very, very powerful because basically inside the brain, the beliefs create structures and that when we have those structures in the brain, they start to affect the way we interact with our world and the way that we interact with experiences in our world. And they really start to formulate things. So for instance, when I was a little girl, my mum said to me, do what you love and the money will come. That's what she would say to me all the time. And so I was never one of those kids who had to study something that my parents thought would make money. So I had another friend of mine and he was told, oh, engineers make good money and you should really do all the subjects at school that are going to allow you to be an engineer. 
And so that's what he did. He did. He studied maths and, and science and various other things that were all a part of what led up to engineering. But the fact was, he really didn't like engineering at all. He didn't like any of those subjects at all. So he wasn't very good at them. It was a real struggle for him to get the marks for them. That really affected his confidence. And then what happened is he actually got good enough marks just to go to university. And at university, he studied engineering. And he did that degree for three, four years. When he came out of that degree, he went and did a job, an engineering job. And um, he was doing that. And after six months, he realized that he could not stand it. He hated that job. And he thought about it and he thought, I've done what my parents wanted me to do for eight years. <laughs> But now my parents aren't here to dictate what I should do. And what I really love to do is photography. And he went back and he studied photography. And now he's a photographer and he has a thriving business doing photography. But his, that belief system that his parents had for him, it took him years and years and years and years of a whole lot of experiences that he wasn't happy with to overcome that and to do something he loved. Whereas for me, I had my mum saying to me, do what you love and the money will come. And so I studied acting. I studied drama at school and I loved stories. So I studied English literature. And even though I was dyslexic, I loved stories so much and I loved those subjects so much that I studied a lot in that area and I loved it and I was passionate about it. And I was really able to overcome my dyslexia in that area. And in the end, I graduated from university with an honours degree in English literature, which was kind of incredible considering that I still couldn't spell very well. And I went out and I became an English teacher and I studied drama and I did that and I loved it and that was my first career. And after a while, there came a point where I didn't want to teach anymore and I started then to go into personal development and standing up and giving a speech. And the thing was that because I'd done all that acting training, when I stood up and gave a speech, I had a training that supported what ended up being my full career in the end. But the fact that I did what I loved led me to the career that I was most passionate about. And because I did what I loved, I had the skill set to support what I loved. I didn't have to go back and relearn a whole lot of things to do that. And these are all parts of how beliefs can affect us. And often our parents can have a great impact on what our beliefs are and what our confidence is in what we want to do and our passion and purpose. So I want to talk a little bit now about how those beliefs are actually formed inside the brain. And there's basically two ways beliefs can be created inside the brain. One is through repeated action. And so it creates a habit and the belief becomes a habit of thought. And the other way is with a strong emotion. So both of those things can create a belief. So I'll give you an example. So say you start out and you are learning to drive. Yeah. And, you know, you, you kind of have a belief. I can learn to drive. Lots of other people learn to drive. So I'm going to learn to drive. And you have that belief in your head. And let's say you're starting to learn to drive. Well, basically, inside your brain, this is how it works. It's a little bit like slashing your way through a jungle to begin with. And you're creating what's called a neural pathway. So first of all, you're, you're there and you're learning to drive and you've got, you know, you, your foot on the accelerator and then, you, you know, and say it's a manual and you've got to change gears and then, my goodness me, now you've got to also look at the road. So there's a lot going on. And at first it can be a bit daunting, but you know that other people have learned to drive, so surely you can as well. So you persist with that. And as you persist, you create a neural pathway. So the very first day when you're learning to drive, you create a neural pathway in the brain. And it's a little bit like a track in the jungle. And then, you know, the next day you're like, whoa, this is much more work than I thought it was, but I'm going to persist because I believe that I'm going to learn to drive. And so the next day, surprisingly enough, it's actually easier because you've already got a pathway in the jungle. And so now you're making that pathway bigger. And then you continue driving and it gets bigger and bigger in your brain, this neural pathway, and becomes easier. And after a while, what happens is it's a little bit like now the bitumen has been put down as you continue to repeat it and it's wide. And after a while, it's like a super highway. 
It's a super highway. And when that happens, the brain actually creates a hormone and it's called a myelin sheathing, this hormone. And it actually wraps around this neural pathway inside the brain and it insulates the electricity running down it. So now, instead of the electricity going down that and it may be diverting to a bunch of other things, the electricity runs down and it's like it's got insulation tape. And so now it's like a nanosecond and it just runs down that pathway. And what happens then is the brain relegates this behavior, this habit, to the subconscious mind or the unconscious mind. You don't have to be conscious. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.